Hello and welcome back to the Hardworking Man Podcast. I'm Heath. And I'm Rachel. And today we're going to talk about our trip that we just took down to Florida for our kids spring break. It was, I think, one of the first spring break (laughs) trips we've ever taken with the kids because of my work schedule. I don't get spring break off often. I've been at my job for over 15 years and vacation picks go by seniority And I'm just now getting to the point where I can get spring break off when I barely have any kids left at home. (laughs) Right. No. And we've, like, I've taken the kids, like, across the state to stay with family over spring break. But it's just not the same when you're stuck in dreary, gray Michigan. (laughs) The nice thing is, though, like, we went to Florida. Not my jam. I'm not a beach guy. I'm not a hot weather guy. I'm not a sun guy. Rachel and the kids love it. That's what I do everything I do for is the family. I'm a family man. So we went down there. But the cool thing was, even though two of my kids are in college and college spring break is different than high school spring breaks, my daughter goes to school down there. So we were Mm -hmm. able to spend half of the week with her and go see where she works. We've been to her school before. So that was cool. You hadn't. No, you're right. I haven't. (laughs) But I've been there through you. So, but we got to go see where she works, hang out there, Mm -hmm. play some games. You know, she works at like a entertainment center with video games and bowling and restaurant and all that. So that was cool. The kids had fun. Careful what kind of entertainment center you (laughs) said she works. She did work at Hooters for a minute there. (laughs) On a dare. She she (laughs) went through the training. Did she even work a shift? I think she worked like a week or two because her friends dared her to work there. And we teach our kids, like, don't be afraid of stuff. They're like, you will never go do that because that is outside of her comfort zone. So she went and did it, which I don't love that my daughter worked at Hooters, (laughs) even though Daytona wings are awesome. I love the fact that she's not afraid to do whatever because she doesn't care what people think. And that's what we try to teach our kids. She's like, you bet I won't go work at Hooters. (laughs) She probably won like $20. (laughs) Yeah. She said, well, she said the girls that were mean. So she wasn't going to put up with that and quit. Yeah. She doesn't play. She's Mm -hmm. like Rachel. She ain't going to play with mean girls. No. Oh, no. I did not welcome any of that. I mean, I was probably the mean girl. (laughs) Yeah, Rachel is the mean girl. It's portrayed as mean because I have a zero tolerance policy, so. Depends on what mood I'm in, if I think she's mean or if I think she has zero tolerance. Well, it depends on what mood I'm in, if I'm mean or not. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just be real. (laughs) But let me say the greatest thing about that whole vacation, other than spending it with family and getting out of this rainy, dreary Michigan weather. You have to admit that was nice. It was nice. It was nice to be able to go... Let's walk to dinner. Let's walk to the beach. Yes. Let's walk here. We walked almost everywhere we because a lot. the big old van didn't do well. We went to Anna mm-hmm. Maria Island in Florida and it barely fit into the parking space we had at our Airbnb. It was hard to fit. They don't make parking spaces for vans. They make parking spaces well, for golf carts. The parking space was just fine. It was the vegetation that the owner of the Airbnb did not trim down. It was grown It was in. a cove. So we had to take the antenna off the van, <laughs> fold the mirrors in, pull in all the way to the right so I could get out the driver's door yeah. and everyone else had to jettison out the right. back of the van. He'd like let me off in the street and I'd hop out and then they'd pull in. But thankfully it's a small island, but not a, I mean, there is a lot of traffic, but everyone's going like 20. Yeah, and they stop when you start pulling out. But the greatest yeah. thing I think of the whole trip was having that van. Was having the van. Driving to Florida in a car is miserable. miserable. Driving to the other through. side of the state in a car is pretty miserable. That van, that van is so comfortable. It's a game changer. Even just driving, it feels so much nicer. The hardworking man tour van. And the greatest <laughs> thing about it is with just two of the kids, we have one row of seats in the back. It can seat 12. We pulled all the other mm-hmm. seats out so we have room for all of our stuff stored inside out of the weather. No hitch cargo carrier, nothing strapped to the roof. Mm-hmm. And my favorite, a cot on the side. Because I can't sleep without my CPAP or my ASV machine for sleep apnea. So I drive for as long as I can. I go back in the cot. I lay down. I put my machine on. I put my eye mask on. Plug it and into I a go power pack. And Rachel drives. And I, I wake drive. up and we're like an hour further. And then it's my turn to drive again. <laughs> Don't even discount. He, it's For some reason, he thinks there's a competition. We rotated like five hours on, five off, five on, five off to get down there. And then I said something about how we drove the same, and he's like, mm. and I was "We like, didn't drive the same. It wasn't five on five. Yes, off. it was. My favorite Both part of my was shifts were five hours. She did so drive a lot. She didn't drive did. an hour. That was a joke. But the way home, you drove 
a lot. Yeah, I drove a lot more on the way home. More but on the way down. Initially, that first day, you drove a lot more. My favorite part on the way down was because, like she said, I hadn't, I've hadn't. i driven down to Georgia before and from Georgia to Florida. I've never driven from Michigan to Florida. And she's like, Atlanta is a nightmare. Well, I happened to drive through Atlanta and it was like four in the morning. It wasn't bad. There was a little bit of traffic, but it wasn't bad. She was in the back in the cot sleeping. And when she woke <laughs> up, she goes, how long till we get to Atlanta? I'm like, how long till we get to Atlanta? I went through Atlanta two hours ago. <laughs> and she's like, oh, was it terrible? I'm like, no, it wasn't bad at all. It was four in the morning. Well, I also told them the last time. So I drove my daughter down to go to school. I said, when you get to Atlanta, there's an HOV lane. Hop in that sucker because it's empty. And if you have more than two people in your vehicle... Yeah, we qualify. You can, we have you four. You can go. And so there's like five lanes of traffic that are at, we're at a stop, standstill, no one moving. And I just like cut across six rows to get into the HOV lane. And then it was smooth sailing. So I told them, and when you get close to Atlanta or whatever, I was like, you got to get in that lane. And I did. But <laughs> there's a point of the HOV lane where the expressway splits. And there's probably signage and whatever telling you. But when I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm following the GPS, and I was the only one awake. And all of a sudden, with no forewarning, in my opinion, because I didn't have my co-pilot there to tell me, I had to get from the HOV lane, like four or five lanes to the right, to stay on the expressway that we were on. Or who knows how long I would have put us out of the way. So I looked, and it was clear, and I took about (laughs) a five-lane sweep to the right to stay on the road we needed. That is the bad thing about that van, though, is it's really hard to see out your right hand, like your passenger mirror. Like, you kind of look. It's got the blind spot mirror, which You lean forward, you're looking, you you can't really see behind, and then you're just like, blinker, hope no one's there. (laughs) But the van's big and people watch out for it. So if you got to push someone out of a lane, Mm. I mean, they better respect you. Do you you. speak from experience? I've pushed a person or two out of a lane. Usually, I don't push people out of lanes unknowingly. I Mm. push them out of lanes when they need to be pushed out of a lane. Not on this trip, thankfully, but... That's a no. Don't play story. with me on the street, man. Not with the van. Don't road rage against me. I will win. I will stay calmish. Uh, a calmish road rage. I wonder if you're more road ragey when I'm in the car. If this is like, listen, when you're alone. listen. Any husband knows that we're probably all amazing drivers, but when your wife's in the car. Like, they think everything's an emergency and, like, you're about to crash at any moment. Well, when there is a car coming into your lane as you're moving into it. So, what she's referring to is the other day we were driving, right? And I'm in the left lane. I pass a truck. I'm about to move back over. You make sure you have enough space so you don't cut the truck over. Truck semis, uh, trucks towing trailers, they have they need more space to stop. People that cut right in front of a semi, if that semi can't stop, guess who loses? You. Mm -hmm. You're dead. Not the semi driver. So I leave enough space so that I can respect that semi driver. So I can respect the guy with the mini skid steer or the tractor or the equipment trailer loaded with gear. So he has enough time to stop because I've been that guy that didn't have enough time to stop because someone cut me off and took my space. So as I pass the semi... I leave enough, I get enough space so I can move over without cutting him off. Well, the impatient driver behind me wasn't happy with that. So he tries to go to the right after I put my turn signal on and pass me on the right and then cut back over in front of me in the left. I don't play that. You ain't taking my spot. So I saw him. I was full aware of where I was, the fact that my vehicle was bigger, and I moved over. And he thought because he was already starting to come past me, that I would, and he honked, and I saw him. I knew where he was, and I just kept coming. And instead of him backing up, he just kept he going. He road rage and floored it. He's over the rumble strips, hitting the grass <laughs> off the shoulder, and flies going around seventy-five miles an hour up in front of me, flipping me off like brake checking the big old van, which he's in a little SUV. Again, he's gonna be the one to lose that. I'll get the ticket. He'll have the headache, but uh. <laughs> Like, I knew what I was doing. I was calm the whole time, and he did all that, and then the best part was I knew where we were going, and I knew that there was a pretty good chance we were getting caught at a red light. So he was turning left, I was turning right, so as we drove past him, me just being... Well, this was funny. Rubbing it in a little bit, I was like, 
lean to the side and wave with a smile on my face. And I was face. like, that's not him. It was some poor lady. <laughs> I did it to the wrong car. And then he, he goes, was a few cars he goes oh, wait, here he is. And he's like, nope, that's not him either. <laughs> and then when I finally passed the guy, he's he all was like, flipping, flipping me off and off. yelling and screaming at me. Yeah, I was like, we were on the way to our kids' wrestling tournament. I was like, I just want to make it to the wrestling tournament, and I hope that guy's not there. <laughs> Don't mess with a wrestling dad. <laughs> No, no. But that all came from, there is a pretty decent blind spot in that van. There but is. You, you take it slow, you signal, and you if you do mess up and there's someone you don't see, they'll usually politely move out of your way. And if they don't, <laughs> they're going to move out of well, my way anyway. Yeah, if no one is like awake or watching with you to be like, can I move over? Yeah, when you got your, your co-pilot or your mm. shotgun rider, you can be like, hey, is the right lane clear? But there's sometimes when you got to make an emergency move, and I mean, it is what it is. And you just are like, ah, mm -hmm. I'm bigger than most. So I know. So, But I have to go down there at the end of this month to drive back with our daughter. You're flying down, though. So I'm it's only a one-way drive. <laughs> I know, but I, it's still 21 hours in the car. With a buster on your lap. With a cat on my lap. That's the worst part is whoever is sitting shotgun has to hold the cat and the carrier on their lap. So as my daughter, who's in college, thought it was a great idea to get a cat. And it's proven to be not a great idea. It's been Who a big knew? inconvenience. She didn't bother to ask her parents like, before she did it. She was just like, hey guys, I got a cat. And we're like, so you know, I got a cat. That was foolish. Like, what did you get a cat for? You're in college. Well, and she's learning through hard knocks that maybe it wasn't the greatest idea. Because when she came to visit with us, she had to find someone to watch it. Because it couldn't be allowed in the Airbnb when she comes home for the summer. Our house is a no cat zone. There ain't no cats coming in here. A cat tried to live on the back porch, and our dogs yeah. quickly made it know that it wasn't welcome when our little dachshund got a hold of it, and we haven't seen that cat since. So I did think I saw a cat the other day. I feel bad. I wouldn't mind having just an outdoor cat. I would an outdoor that cat thing. wouldn't be bad because they'll eat mice, but right. our dogs... They won't have They're it. not having an outdoor cat. They're not cat. having an outdoor cat. That one that the dogs got, actually, so... One night when I was home, actually not night, day, because I was working midnights and I was home trying to sleep. And I swear these dogs know. They're like, hey, dad's trying to sleep. Like, ha good luck. Let's bark every couple of minutes for no reason. Let the dogs, our dogs don't sleep in our bed. They sleep in the kids' bed. They sleep bed. with the kids. But if it's during the day, I'm like, just let the, put the dogs in the bed with you. That's all they want. They feel unsettled just sitting out here knowing you're up there. But so one day I was trying to sleep. I was tired. I he was won't. dead tired. I get a little bit grumpy when I'm tired. If I'm hungry and tired, that's the worst. It's hangry level 10. But so I'm trying to sleep. And these dogs, it's like they knew I was overtired because they bark more than I've ever had them bark before. And I was like trying to stay calm, trying to sleep, trying to, you know, like just ignore it and sleep through it. And I couldn't, and finally Rachel gets home with one of the kids from a sporting practice or event, whatever it was, and she opens the garage door, the and cat that cat ran out. It, it out. was in our garage door, which is why the dogs were going crazy, which mm -hmm. is cool, because they knew something was up. Even though it was a cat, they were trying to keep the, the house safe in their eyes, in their minds. So, uh, oh, yeah. And that was the same cat that a few days later our little wiener dog caught on the back porch, and it hasn't been back since. Well, they also chase, they think they're going to catch. I was just shocked that cat didn't run away because it's way faster than that little wiener dog. But there's a little chipmunk that likes to terrorize them too. Oh, yeah. That thing right ruined here is a sleep ruiner. I'm going to catch door. that little sucker. <laughs> no. So I just, they never can catch that chippy. We call it chippy. Yeah. He literally terrorizes them. He'll he comes and there. looks in the door at them <laughs> and they bark. And then as soon as they are going to get out, the, it goes down the little it's hole. It's the same with squirrels. They think they're going to catch those squirrels. And the second you open the door, they make so much noise and racket. That squirrel's 80 feet up in the tree before they yeah. get close well, to it. Well, and the cat, because we have to hook the little docks and the little wiener dog up, because she'll go off chasing deer, chasing whatever. Well, the two of them together are trouble. The other one, though, the catahoula, like, she never gets hooked up. She goes out. She doesn't leave the yard usually. She stays around. Mm -hmm. But so when we let them out to chase the squirrel that they think they're going to catch, the catahoula goes out, but instead of taking her shot and trying to qu go quick and quiet at the squirrel, 
she turns around and barks at the other one until she gets hooked up. And then they both go after it. Like she said, it's 80 foot up the tree already. No, and then they run around the base of it thinking they're going to get it barking. Yeah, There's... sniffing, finding the trail that it took to the tree to confirm that it's up the tree. I mean, the only thing they catch uh, every year, Jasmine brings us baby, bunnies. baby rabbits. And so do... proud, drops, drops them at the door them as at a the gift. Door. We're like, are you a cat? Bringing a de- <laughs> like, I'd prefer a dead mouse, not a baby rabbit. And then you take it and you're like, oh my gosh. And then. 20 minutes later, there's another, and you're like, where are you she finding gets these? the whole litter. What are you going to do, man? <laughs> and the kids, when they were young, I mean, she's, she does this every year. And it's right around Easter, because that's when the baby bunnies right? are out. <laughs> and the kids, like, would go and try to stalk her to find out where she's to save them. finding the rabbits. Because we don't know. I mean, I... From what I've read, they can just be in the middle of your lawn. Yeah, they'll just make a nest in the yeah, yard. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, well, we're in the woods. We're like out. Who knows? We have so much yard that it's, there's no way to find it. So they would try to stalk and hide and never could figure it out. But every year, she brings us a few baby rabbits. She does. But back on squirrels, if you um, see my cup here, squirrel. Because a podcast a while ago and we were talking about ADHD and squirrel and everyone no, commented squirrel. It was our live stream. Oh, a live stream. <laughs> uh, during a live stream and people are like, we're Making talking fun about. Making of you. I think Ken from York Firewood, Firewood yes. was the biggest one yeah, to make fun like, of you. Yeah, he's like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And I would read it and it would distract me because that's how my life is. I, can, <laughs> I can't walk 10 feet without being distracted and doing 12 different things. But so the other day, Rachel's at TJ Maxx, one of her favorite stores ever, and Ray Dunn, we have a whole cabinet full of it, it's a collection, and me being a good husband when I was down working in California or working in other places, you can get different stuff in different places, so I would go daily to look for her Ray Dunn, (laughs) to look if I could find a special mug or a special thing, and one of the things I'm proudest of, I got her this hot cocoa pot. That's really rare and really hard to find. I have never seen one in the store. And I got that sucker for her. So, like, a lot of times. So, all of Ray Dunn is basically, it's just these mugs. Which, these are the best coffee mugs, in my opinion. They're huge. They're, I don't want to drink out of a mug smaller than this. (laughs) I'm very particular. It's why I don't like drinking coffee at a restaurant. Because they give you a stupid little (laughs) Oh, yeah, the little thick mug. It's a little stupid mug. And then there's never anything good to put in it. I don't drink coffee black. And it's just a, I would, I just pass. I'm not a coffee lover enough that I'll drink any kind of coffee. It's got to be very specific to make me enjoy it. So one of these mugs, in fact, I bought my mother these mugs. So when I stay at her house, I can use one because I am that fussy about how I like to and drink And we my have coffee. hundreds of these mugs, but yes. they are cool. So like, they all I got have squirrel. sayings on them. I Nate, my boy, he got one that says chick magnet, chick magnet on one side. And then on the other side, this has a little dog. His has a little baby chick, and he's like, chick magnet, I'm a chick magnet, you right. know, walking out with his wow. ILS, his invisible lat syndrome, <laughs> walking with his arms to the side like he's all jacked up. And the funny thing is, I read the word, because there's a lot of them, I don't know, they just have all different, just a one, well, sometimes there's, it's a phrase, but... It, my mood in the morning. <laughs> oh yeah, when I pick her mug. cup out, when I make her coffee in the morning, yeah. I'm like, what do I want today? If he brings like, it up to me, and I was like, oh, ooh. this is what you. I don't want that. <laughs> I am so particular about. It's like the mood of the day of the. His brother, I remember you didn't. Or he my didn't believe. His sister in law. His sister in law collects too. it too. And it's it a was, collectible, man. It is. You gotta have you thousands have, of them, or like, you don't. It, the little, little things. The $6 mug brings me so much joy. They're $9 that... now with inflation. No, they are not. $6 <laughs> with inflation. They were four ninety nine. This one was eight ninety nine in no, Florida. No, it wasn't. Yeah, they were expensive. Lies. It bankrupted us. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's two-sided. But anyways, it was the summer I was at his cottage when I got my concussion tubing. And your speeding ticket. And that same weekend? I think so. It was a great weekend, I guess. <laughs> We haven't gone back. I don't know. I did go back the next year. But anyways, we were um, in the morning. I was still like, like, I just couldn't keep my eyes open. That was the biggest symptom of my concussion was I just could not keep my eyes open. Even though I was very cognizant of everything going on. But it was, I got up in the, the next morning and I like, got my coffee 
and we, we were talking and he didn't believe that it like meant something to me what I chose on my mugs to drink my coffee. He was like, whatever, what does it matter? He goes, oh yeah, so what one did you pick today? And it literally said like sleepy. <laughs> he was like, you're gotta be kidding me. The I was like, mugs, I choose the mug based on how I'm feeling. I think the only mug she drinks out of besides these are when she went to Hawaii with my daughter for yeah. her high school spring break, she got a Maui mug. Yeah. And when we were in Florida, we had to go on a hunt for Starbucks. The Starbucks Maui mug in each state, I guess, has their own yeah, mug. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. It's called, like, where you go or something. So each state at a Starbucks has a state-specific mug. And it has, like, the, you know, like, I've, I don't have a Michigan one because I don't care about Michigan. You don't like Michigan. <laughs> but it, like, has whatever. You don't get one every state you go through, but, like, no. Florida. Some She's like, do. I want a Florida mug Some because do. Florida makes me happy. So, Right. So the again, Maui mug, the Maui mug, like, literally, it, our son's girlfriend was using it and i was like <gasps> don't touch my mug. i don't know if i want you to use that mug like if you break that because you can only get like you can get a hawaii one from just basic but like they make a special maui one that you can buy when you're on maui only <laughs> and i was like do not i don't think can you get a different mug like literally that mug Makes my heart very happy. <laughs> so we had to get her a Florida mug we had because to get a Florida mug. I take care of my girl. So I'm like, you know what? We got to go to Starbucks. I'm yeah. battling traffic. I'm <laughs> battling the heat in Florida. The Florida sun beating down on me. And I'm like, let's find a Starbucks. Which is funny because I don't drink Starbucks coffee. I do not frequent no, Starbucks. Not at all. We don't ever. support Starbucks other than the I just the mugs. bought the mug, which I think that's like a $14 mug. So. <laughs> oh, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so we find a Starbucks and we follow the GPS there and we get there and she can't find it. It's, it's in, a, in mall. a mall. It's in the basement of a Macy's. Well, like I didn't know it was in the basement. Me. She's like, I'm way over here, whatever. So, and they don't have the mug. So then we're driving somewhere else and I see a Starbucks. It was on the right. I have to cut three, four lanes of traffic over and get up. <laughs> She's like, oh, you don't have to go there. I'm sure we'll find one. She gets there, gets the last Florida mug that they have. But so, the guy was so sweet at the Starbucks. Oh, too. for one at the first Starbucks. Got the last one at the next one. Yeah. She might not have got her Florida mug if she didn't have mm. such an amazing you husband. You never know. That guy was like, Or if I knew they were $14. <laughs> if you know how much they cost. <laughs> I didn't see a Starbucks. What are you talking about? He was like, what brings you to Florida? Welcome. And I was like, oh, here for spring break. And he's like, yours? And I was like, oh, honey. <laughs> no, my children. He's like, well, you don't know. And I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I get that all the time, too. I get that all the so, time, too came out so yeah that's more of a compliment to me people think it's a compliment when you get like id'd if you're getting a drink at a restaurant and they're like oh can i see your id i don't think of that as being or at the grocery store or something yeah, i don't get carded much anymore i, <laughs> I must be looking all right i'm like i get carded pretty frequently but i don't i'm just like serious like i don't you don't have to do that for me <laughs> like there's no you don't you have do to because like, you like it when it happens i do not yeah I, you do no i don't i honestly do not think it i was like there's no way there's not a chance that you think that i am not 21 years old or 31 years old <laughs> like i just can't to me it's it doesn't i'm just more like serious like i'm not the girl Honestly, a big pet peeve of mine is when people are like, happy 29th birthday to someone who's clearly in her 40s. I think that's more of a dig than a compliment. Don't ever do that to me. I don't like that. And you will. Yeah, she ain't 29. <laughs> Look I'm her. not 29. <laughs> and I do not care. Like, I'm not trying to pretend I am 29. I hate I used that. To, when I was 29, I'd get carded to buy lottery tickets because I looked young. And now... I, they're like, you got an AARP card? I don't know what happened. Uh, like, right. The like, last 10 years have been rough, man. Like, they're they like, hit we me. have a senior discount. <laughs> wink, wink. You get the 50 cent <laughs> coffee, sir? Like, no, I'm buying it for my wife. <laughs> no, one time, it was like last year, and I was going out with some, going to go to a girlfriend's house for like ladies night, and I stopped at the gas station to get some seltzers, and the kid was like, oh, do you have your ID? And I was like, it's in the car. And he's like, well, I need you to get it. And I was like, are you serious? 
Our like, son is going to be 21 yes, next month. Yes, literally. Like, <laughs> That's where I'm like... I feel I, like if my kid can drink, you shouldn't have to check me like anymore. Like, my son's 21, and there's no way. It's... No, I do not feel like it's a compliment. I mean, I guess it is, but I also feel like a lot of well, people... Well, some places have to ask, they just no matter have what. To ask I seen everyone. a lady who was probably 70 get carded the other day, right. so... Some places they have to, like, you ask everyone, no matter what, or you can lose your job. And obviously that person's 21, right. but if you need your job and you don't want to get in trouble, you ask that person for their well, ID. So that's was, probably what's happening to you. Probably. There was one time, <laughs> it was a year, two, maybe two years ago, and I don't think I've aged that much in two years, but I was out for a friend's birthday party, and I think I was one of the younger ones. It was like a business friend. And I, I got So you there. work with a bunch of old people? They're just older than I am. <laughs> and she, it was, I got it like a glass of wine and they asked for my ID and left. And like, I don't think anything of it. I literally don't go, are you kidding? Like, I don't talk. I just give it. That's it. There's no discussion. Is this when they didn't card anyone else? They didn't card anyone <laughs> else. That was, then I was like, really? I kind of thought they were just carding everyone. And they're like, no. <laughs> and I was like, well then. Yeah, all their friends are like, oh, okay. you got carded? Like, blah, blah, Yeah, blah. they're like, serious? They didn't card me? And I was like. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, well, what? you look old. <laughs> so in that instance, I was like, dang, maybe I do look a little young. <laughs> but that's irrelevant. So your real take on Florida. He grumbled, <sighs> complained. I don't like the heat, man. About My body Florida. odor was Listen. off the charts. Listen. I sweat every day. I'd get up, take a shower, <laughs> and in like 10 minutes, I'd be like, who is it? Oh, that's me. Like, I don't, the heat and that, humidity isn't my jam. That happened to me once. Turns out I just still had onions on my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be honest with you. Like, it, it, we're not wealthy. We're not rich. We don't have more money than we know what to do with. No. Vacations for dads, you can probably relate. Vacations are stressful. Vacations aren't really that fun for me. He's like hung his head in his hands every dinner because he knew the bill that was coming. The bill, so I went and I'm like, you know what? Because I know I try to learn because the kids don't like when you're like, no, we don't have money for that. No, we don't have money. For, no, let's eat at home instead so of eating out. So you think you tried to avoid that? I did my best. <laughs> and I made it like two or three days. I made it two or three days where I'm like, whatever we want to do, we're going to do. And then I'm going and then like my phone goes off and it's like, he just boom, continue. more money out, more money out, more money out. Like my phone is just, it's, it's getting hot. It's going off so much with okay. money leaving my account. And so after a few days, I'm like, hey, let's eat at home. And they're like, but I want donuts and I want ice cream and I want this and I want we... that. And Rachel wants to give the kids experiences. And so do I. But I know at the okay. end of the day. There's one person responsible for paying that bill, and now I got to figure out how to do it. So vacations for dads are stressful. It's not Listen. a vacation. I come home more tired than I go. We are so thrifty on our vacation. We are thrifty, you but it still is not cheap, even. man. We did not a single excursion. We didn't do a single outside activity. The one we did at Megan's work was free. We didn't pay extra, but it doesn't for mean anything. it's cheap. We spent a lot of money. I could have bought a, and then, a little skid steer. Or two something. days later, he runs off to to Canada to go buy some four thousand dollars something. No, I like didn't it's buy nothing. It. Listen, it was a a, a backhoe attachment. <laughs> You're talking for my like tractor. they're gonna side that, with you. They are gonna side with me. It's man math. It Everyone matter. knows man math. It was a backhoe attachment for my tractor. I was getting for less than four thousand U.S. dollars, and it was worth probably about ten thousand U.S. dollars. Right, and he was not going to sell it at any time in the century. But I was going to sell my second dump trailer to no, pay it for wasn't. it. So it was a swap of equipment. He it wasn't a, an expenditure. No. It was an investment and a money making investment. You have ideas of things you're going to. So do. I had my second dump trailer that I was going to sell that has already <laughs> I made more money renting that trailer out than I bought it for. This Plus I've used it no. myself. Plus I can sell it for more than I bought it for. This is and I, I was going to sell that and buy a backhoe for my vacation. tractor that was worth twice as much as I was buying it Listen. for. But when I got there to buy it it needed a bracket to attach it, and the guy couldn't sell the bracket off his tractor, and I didn't want to add the cost of that bracket 
because I knew I had to pay for the Florida vacation. So I said, you know what, guy, this is a great deal, but it's going to have to be a great deal for somebody else. For somebody else. Listen, you started off this podcast saying we haven't gone on a vacation like this in 15 years. That don't mean we haven't spent money. We go on baseball you, trips. You've you, talked about this. Those cost more than a regular they do vacation. Cost a lot of money. But we spend tons. We haven't gone on also, spring break. We go on vacation every year. There's we hadn't gone on spring break. And we got to go to Nashville in a couple weeks. And I'm supposed weeks. to be happy about it. In July. With more money the, coming stay out. Stay home. Have fun. <laughs> I still got to pay that. Like, it's, it's stressful. It is what it is. I ain't going to lie. I like to pretend that it's not, like, but it is. It's you have stressful. so much you could sell. I'm going to have to return my squirrel coat. If you weren't coat. such a hoarder. It's, you can't sell uh, it all. Uh, 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 we got to uh, have it to make money, now, girl. there's a lot of things currently. You bought that new four-wheeler with the, prim- with the promise that you're selling another. And I'm selling the other one. I when? just haven't had time. Mm-hmm. This is why I don't I gotta fix the I don't seat feel bad. And I got to fix the float on the we car because it leaks so I can get another couple hundred dollars instead of losing so that money. so thrifty. This trip was so thrifty. The place we stayed, the Airbnb, Airbnb might sound fancy to y'all, but it is not. It can be. It was It was not. adequate. It, it was, was adequate. It was better than a tent. And that's what I kept telling myself. This is better than a tent. It has a bathroom. Can you make it sound like I made you live in the ghetto? And it Come has on. Bed- There's no ghetto on Anna Maria Island. There's there were bedrooms. Two well, one didn't have a door. One did. Ours had a bifold closet. A bifold door. closet door. So Rachel was like, <laughs> I knew, "How am I supposed to get with my man?" I knew a hundred percent. The kids are right next door. I was getting into because I read the reviews and I just was like, "That's it's fine. old Florida." <laughs> That's what the lady says. This is such a funny term to me because I. It up. was dirt. It was dirty. It was I dirty. I don't know why. I and they were uh, not cockroaches. Palmetto. Palmetto bugs. <laughs> a cockroach family. <laughs> Whatever. We got them. We, we have mice them in our them. house, so I guess mice and lizards and squirrels and bats. It is what it is. We have had. Yeah, I <laughs> keep waiting because it's going to be bat season soon. No, like, don't bats tell me. get in our house, so I'm like. Do we yeah, got hey, tennis hey, racket hey, stage? Squirrel. Do we got? Do we got tennis talking. racket stage? Because. <laughs> You gotta have the tennis rackets to defend yourself. They, it's the only way. They're to about stun to them. wake up. It's the only way to stun them and get them out of the house. They're fixing to wake up. They're fixing get ready. to wake up. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying I don't about know. our Airbnb? Oh, I scoured the internet for gosh months. Well, we bought the wrong one first, so and we then, had to wait a week to get our money back because. We yes. got an Airbnb. I think we already talked about Yeah, this, that you but... couldn't park at, that you couldn't use well, the facilities, you couldn't do anything. So we had to get our money back resort. before we could book one. And in that week time frame, we missed out on some really nice ones. Then there was one that I was like, because then I was like, I just want to be on Anna Maria Island. Because once we get there, there's a free trolley that will bring you that all around work. the we island. We rode it once, one time. Twice. Twice. Well, yeah, once uh, on the way there and once on the way back. No, you didn't ride the second time because oh, you opted right. to stay home from you, Because you ice missed cream. it when our one son was on it. Didn't matter. I still, we lost a kid. We did lose a kid. He's 17. He chose to but get But we on. had to get pictures of the sunset with Rachel but and anyways, my daughter. But anyways, I rode it twice. It was very effective when you actually got on. And there is a schedule. We that just, doesn't work because traffic was so bad. It was, was an hour and a half up. late. It was not an hour and a half. We could walk to dinner further than well, we could ride, faster than we could ride listen, the trolley. Listen, dinner was a, a mile, just over a mile away. I can walk a mile in le- 15 minutes. So why would I stand here and wait 20 minutes for a trolley to bring me? That's what I would I'm rather saying. get the, the exercise. trolley was a so, cool idea. If the trolley was a 30 minutes away, because we just didn't look at it before we all got ready and left the house, we just didn't plan well. We we're just not great well, planners. Plus, they probably didn't understand that hardworking man was going to be on the <laughs> island drawing in a bunch of people no. congesting the traffic congesting the roads and the trolley was packed well, we actually did a pull-up competition on the yeah. trolley the time we did ride it yeah so that yeah. was cool because they got the the bar seats you can sit in it was and a little then scary they the bars you can hold on to and the leather the straps and we're sitting there and i don't know if we've talked about the straight leg pull-ups that i can do and <laughs> pass but uh he's very proud Rachel was watching some dude fitness guy on Instagram and he was doing straight leg pull-ups and she's like, man, I wish someone in my family could do those. And I literally was like, here, hold my beer. I'll go do some right now. And I went after drinking some beers and I 
wearing my blue jeans and my t-shirt and I just did <laughs> straight legs out and just started ripping out pull-ups and the kids are like can't do them my college baseball player son can't do them my wrestler now my wrestling son can do them because he's made yes, his goal to beat can. me so he's creeping on me but uh so I started ripping those out so we're on the trolley and just some some girl probably in her 20s I would guess and she was pretty physically fit, and she did a couple pull-ups. And I was like, hey, that's pretty good. And then her mom was like, oh, I can do that. And her mom did more. Her mom more. was better. And then I was like, I can't do straight leg pull-ups on this, Charlie. There's no room, but I got to I I gotta prove my you. own. Yeah, right. so We're I'm like, such a competitive family that you can't let I'm someone like, do pull-ups without being like, I'll do I can so, show I'll you I'll do some one-arm pull-ups. So I did a couple <laughs> of one-arm pull-ups. Yes. And then they were loving it. It was a lot of fun. So that was cool doing the pull-up. That was probably the highlight of the trip, doing the pull-up competition <laughs> on the trolley. For you. And then you sweat and stunk and got your BO. Uh, that happened as soon as I stepped outside in that Florida heat. The Florida heat. It was 72. He oh, it was fire. It got over. She promised me it wasn't going to get over 80. It and like went, the first day, I'm driving the van. And I look down. It's like 82. And I'm like, that was like just death burning no, into the windows. That was like inland on the expressway. It was freezing. Oh, now you got, now you got a... It was. Exceptions. We weren't. We weren't living on the expressway. We were living on the island. Eighty two is eighty two. You melt, no. you die. <laughs> eighty two was. I was like, oh, this feels so good. Uh, it was actually like every night once that sunset. It was windy it did get and chilly. it got cold. Oh, tell them about the video we got. A dolphin eating a fish. That was the highlight of the trip. Yeah, there was. A, we were out on a pier, and this dolphin. I see this dolphin come flying, and I'm like, "Here comes the dolphin!" And she grabs her camera to record it, and this thing's chasing the sheephead fish. I think it was, and we see it jumping out of the water and diving and chasing, and she's filming the whole thing, <laughs> except she's not. She did the per thing where you record turn your cord, turn and your then camera. you stop recording and you hold it so she watched the whole thing through her phone I recorded without so it recording good. she I recorded three seconds of it three seconds at the very end i did so good though I it was, would have been an awesome video i did record the first dolphin that we saw on the other side that was the only day we saw dolphins too yeah. so it was a good she thing got we to see went a manatee there. that was a dream of her life to see a big fat blob in the water <laughs> there there was a, we each had like bucket list things we wanted to see like like, I wanted to see dolphins because I forgot I saw them in Yeah, she's Hawaii. like, I've never seen a dolphin. I'm like, you didn't see a dolphin in Hawaii? And she's like, oh, yeah, we saw lots of dolphins in oh, yeah, I guess I did. I just forgot. And then... Um, she wanted to see an alligator. She's the alligator. only one that saw an alligator. I did. And it was, we were getting on to the expressway and there was a pond down there. And I was like, there's something sticking out. Boom, it, gator. Gator. No one else saw it. But no her. one else. I saw it. And manatee. I wanted to see a manatee and a shark. And, I, and there were the sharks, sharks were, we saw more sharks manatees. when we went to see the manatees. And I just wanted to, I don't even know. I think that was, <laughs> I, I think that was a, Zach. I had no bucket list. You had nothing. not get sunburned and I won because I didn't get sunburned. Zach, Nate, he, bleh, he just didn't want to go. That's all. So he went. Zach I'd had, rather go to the mountains. I Tennessee, Colorado. I know. The Somewhere best part in the mountains. Was, Let's go. His buddy from work went to Gatlinburg, oh, Tennessee. Oh, yeah, and it was beautiful. He's like, this is so awesome. I'm like, yeah, I'm in Florida on a beach I was like, getting he sunburned. wishes he was there. But Zach's... Like just trying to fight women off fight. like the whole trip. Enough. Zach's... <laughs> I tried to get you to go take pictures for those, those bunch of women. Lots of beach... Oh, these bunch of women. They were doing Instagram, pulling their swimsuits up into their <laughs> making thongs. And Rachel's like, go take their picture. I'm like, they don't want some 43-year-old guy they up help. there. They No. They were. And they're, it, it was hilarious. You went out there. There was like a group of other ladies that were out there. You went there that night? I was there the night when these two ladies were down there and pulling the swimsuits up, splashing water, trying to get these epic shots for Instagram or for whatever it was. And their two little girls kept running into the pictures, ruining them. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not trying to act like they got some little girls right now. No. Like They're trying to put themselves out there. And these little girls are running through the shots. And we were up just back there just dying laughing. Yeah. We had a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but Zach's list included. He wanted a pina colada. Which we got. Him. Which we got. Uh, virgin pina virgin colada. Virgin pina coladas. For the record. And he wanted to, to drink, out, to of drink a out of a coconut. A real coconut. Which we got him. And he and said it was the most vile thing he'd ever <laughs> tasted. And he threw it away. 
he was like, I do not want this. And so we got the three. So Zach and Nate and Megan each got one. It was at, there was like a, a beach market where there was a bunch of like artisans who did, there was clothing, like handmade tie dye stuff. And they had a bunch of jewelry and just like art. Just a flea market. A flea it was market. a flea market. Well, we call it price flea market. an artisan market. It was a flea market. And then they also had this company who, I don't know how they, they like, I really don't know the They weren't even of Florida coconut. coconuts. They were imported from like Columbia or somewhere. No, not Columbia, but it was I said a it were somewhere. It was a place, but they, they I guess like, those are the best coconuts. They were trimmed up and they had yeah. a brand on the side and they pound she a thing in there. opened it up. And open it and put a straw fresh, in there. Stuck and you a take strain. a drink and you go, Whoop! Because it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, they were on it ice. It was warmish. They and were warmish. I didn't even taste it, but the kid said it was nasty. So I well, paid $30 to dump coconut water out on the beach. I actually did. I used my bank account for that, so you couldn't complain. Oh, I'll put some money back in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then we tried to take them home. I didn't complain until now. I did so we, good. We tried to take them home for souvenirs because, you know, like you bought it it's special. i told them what to do you got to scrape all the meat out put it in the oven at 300 <laughs> degrees and then put it outside for three weeks it's simple when we thought that we could bring it home but then by the time it made it i mean it was like i don't know two days on sitting under a seat in a van they, they were nasty. full of mold i told them what to do they didn't listen to dad what they're would like, i know and then they go i don't even know why we're keeping these anyways yeah, they all i was like they're for away. you which, they have the weirdest straws down there. They look like... Yeah, to save the turtles. They're paper. They suck. No, but the ones that are like brown Yeah, jelly. they're like... I don't even know. Give me a real straw and a styrofoam cup. But like That's we, all I ask for. I'm a simple man. We would get some of those ones, but then like randomly you'd get a normal plastic yeah. straw. We'd all be jealous of the person who got the real <laughs> straw. Like, like the things that bother like you in life. Like how'd you get a real straw? I mean, you know, if I'm that fussy about what coffee mug i'm drinking out of the straw is definitely if i'm gonna get an ice cold soda out of a fountain machine i want it in a styrofoam Styrofoam. cup so it's not sweating all over it tastes better i don't care what you say it tastes better mcdonald's used to have styrofoam cups for tea and we'd go we need two large diet large regular coke in a styrofoam cup cup. and they took that away but i think ohio still has styrofoam yeah different states still do different states still do we should move because Michigan well, don't. No, but certain but Florida gas has dumb stations straws. do. Some some gas stations do. So I will if choose to try drive it, to go a different to the, gas station again. Go get to a the pop. fountain 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 pop place. <laughs> get you a fountain soda. Get you one in a plastic cup and one in a styrofoam cup and tell me the styrofoam cup ain't better. Well, a lot of people complain about these metal tumblers and say that they taste metally. They might tomatoes. I taste actually like metal. I saw uh, one of these that was like a cup size, mug size, and then it has a glass insert you fit into it. they just taking your money. Why don't we just buy it? Like, let's just use a mason jar, people. That's what we do. It's way easier. Which, that was the funniest thing. They shared, the wrestling coach shared some meme about, and it showed like a... When I went to my friend's house and he gave me a drink and it was in a, a paste picante jar with the label still on it, I ain't never going back. I'm like, like don't that's... come to our house, that's what we drink out of 90%. And she's like, well, we peel the labels off. That's our drink where, if it ain't a Ray Dunn mug, it's or a... a metal tumbler from Bubba or Stanley or something that she has a collection of, it's something that salsa or queso no or spaghetti sauce spaghetti sauce came in classico spaghetti sauce has the best mason jars. why are you gonna buy glasses with kids that are gonna no. break them and lose no i was up did. in my son's room the other day looking for his golf shoes because they were going golf and he couldn't find them and i find a bag in the corner from when he cleaned his room with like 10 of our cup mason jars in there like no wonder we got to keep buying salsa so well, we can have drink cups because they're all up in his room that, so when he cleaned his room, he puts them in a bag and throws them in the corner. When we were first married, we did what every married couple does. And we you, went out and bought real nice you glasses. You register for things. We got a nice set of glasses, tall ones, silver short wear. ones. We tested that silverware on our he honeymoon. literally tested it in his mouth in the Because that's important, man. If you're going to have silverware, it has to feel good to eat off. He was and pretending he was stuff, eating ice cream if it and bends, he would bend. If nope. you can bend a spoon, I don't want it. No, so put, put it back. We were at a place in Colorado and they had this silver. She's like, oh, I like this. And I take it and I'm like, no, it bends. <laughs> like, put Literally, it back in the box, back on the shelf. Put it and in And we didn't mouth. find a set. And we, we still did. got 90% of it. That the, yes. Like, 
the kids throw some away, or I find it out in the yard from time to time. I do feel like some that stuff's throw legit. It away. It's twenty two years old. It's legit. No, it is. It's the best silverware. In fact, I remember my parents, my dad and stepmom came over for dinner one time and she was like, you don't need to bring this fancy stuff out for us. <laughs> <laughs> Good silverware and sharp knives. Silverware. It'll change your life. Your like, kitchen knife's got to be sharp. It's thick. But then we also have a random assortment of <laughs> forks and Well, yeah, I've had to mix them in because the kids leave option. them in the yard and throw them away. And everybody like, has like I'll their I'll go to throw something in the trash forks. can and there's a bowl in there with a spoon <laughs> in it. Like, And the kids are like, oh, we can wash this, you I know. Forgot. It's, I think we all just have ADHD over here and nobody oh, knows no. what's coming or going. If I'm talking sense, you know there's something wrong with the rest <laughs> of you. But... I don't even know how long we started doing that. I was like, these are really good. Mason jars are meant to go Be the reused. test of time. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. They do not. We're saving the planet. Shatter. You know? you know how many glasses have shattered in the dishwasher? Like you just we put bought it a in set and it of cups. shatters. We bought a set of glasses again 22 years ago. And we have, I think, one or two, two. of them left. We have two of the tall ones. Two left. Yeah. That's a good run, though. <laughs> But it, the, those mason jars, all different sizes, all different color. I, I'll buy the pretty, which I bought. Oh, she'll buy stuff because the jar it's in. Like, is that yeah. good? I don't know, but look at that jar. I know. There are certain spaghetti well, I've sauce. done that too because there was some uh, the kids are like, some jelly at Menards jar. that came in a jar with a handle on it. And I'm like, Rachel will love that. The jelly might suck. The jam <laughs> might suck. But I got to get We're it for her. And I did. We still got jar. a few of them. But, you know, if they break, I don't really care because a lot of people just throw that away. Or I guess they recycle it. But not us. We just keep reusing. So you and never so, know what glass you're going to have. So, Jake, wrestling coach, if you're going to judge us, <laughs> don't come to my house. That's it what ain't because we're out poor. Of. It's because we're exotic. Thrifty. We're, we're thrifty. exotic over here. No, we're, we're thrifty. Thrifty. I prefer, I choose this. It's not a matter of unable to afford. This is my preference. But we've been going here for a long time. Yeah, on that note, we gotta we gotta wrap. We gotta wrap it up because I'm hungry. My yes. girl needs to make me some dinner. We don't have any kids home tonight, so it feels really weird. It does. One day this is gonna be our reality. But we haven't been interrupted once this whole podcast. The dogs haven't even bothered us. They're like finally a break. If y'all knew what happens behind the scenes when we're recording a podcast with the kids and the dogs, you'd wonder how we even got it done. But. This was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Right. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Share with your friends. And anywhere that you can watch a podcast, listen to a podcast, we're on it. Po uh <laughs> We're sort of a big deal. If you didn't know, we're sort of a big deal. <laughs> we're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Amazon Music Podcasts. Any of those, it's put on all of them. So if you want to watch, we have a video. If you want to listen, we have that also. So thanks again and have a great night, guys. Bye, everyone.